Greetings, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, I have surely visited near empty churches over the years and have even come over to the church here at St. Mary after hours, so to speak. Yet to know that at least a period of weeks is to pass before we are able to gather once again as a community of faith in this beautiful sacred space to celebrate the central mystery of our Catholic faith, the Mass, and at all times, Lent and Holy Week and Easter, that is a very hard reality to wrap my mind around just now. And my heart is clothed in heaviness, as I am sure our hearts ache right now. This is a surreal kind of experience indeed. My purpose in this initial message that I hope will have a wide viewing among parishioners and maybe beyond is to pledge to you that while there are many forms of contact that are temporarily off limits to us, we as a parish will not drift into isolation to a fraction of a degree more than what is imposed on us from the duly assigned authorities, civil or ecclesiastical. While it is surely not an equal substitute, we plan to have available each weekend a recorded celebration of Mass from St. Mary Church. It will likely feel like the locally telecast Mass for shut-ins that many of us have viewed in the past. Of course, EWTN has carried Mass on a daily basis for decades, and some parishes within our diocese regularly live stream weekend Mass through their local cable companies. Just today, Bishop Barron is making daily Mass available via his Word on Fire organization. It is a great thing if we can flood the airwaves with resources for Catholics to be able to unite in spirit, if not in person. Whew. Who would have thought on Ash Wednesday that we would be forced to fast from physically receiving Holy Communion? Yet, dear brothers and sisters, I believe that if I if we choose to tap the graces that are to be offered to us through this ordeal, we will actually not only get through this time, but indeed discover a greatly deepened passion for the Eucharist that we will live out for the remainder of the days God grants us on earth and be stronger defenders of the magnificence of the miracle that is the body and blood of Christ presented right here every time Mass is celebrated. The first reading for today's Mass, the Tuesday of the third week of Lent, carries a message that I believe is fitting for our current situation. Although, how could it not? It is, after all, the living Word of God. From the prophet Daniel, words that are spoken by Azariah, one of the three righteous young men who are cast into the fiery furnace by the pagan king Nebuchadnezzar for not bowing down to a golden idol, a false god. Speaking on behalf of all his brothers and sisters in the Jewish faith, he makes a confession. He does not take an attitude, why is this happening to me? I have tried to live faithfully. Instead, he chooses a posture of humility in confessing that God does nothing that is less than just and God will act in our lives. Azariah stood up in the fire and prayed aloud, for your name's sake, O Lord, do not deliver us up forever or make void your covenant. Do not take away your mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, your beloved, Isaac, your servant, and Israel, your holy one. For we are reduced, O Lord, beyond any other nation, brought low everywhere in the world this day because of our sins. We have in our day no prince, prophet, or leader, no place to offer first fruits, to find favor with you. But with contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be received, as though it were burnt offerings of rams and bullocks or thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be in your presence today as we follow you unreservedly. For those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. Azariah is asking God for deliverance on behalf of his people. While he is not himself a priest, yet his example is an outstanding one for any minister of God's people. The faithful ought to be able to look to their priests in time of trial so as to receive comfort and intercession to God on their behalf. 
People of faith do not blame God for illness, for calamities and tragedies of all kinds. People of faith open their minds and hearts to connect personal and family pain and suffering to the wounds of Jesus Christ. Is that not the fundamental focus of the devotion we call the Stations of the Cross? A question that I offer for each of us to consider. What insights may I embrace in these days that will lead me to live more in a manner that demonstrates, yes, God, I know you are real, and I am sorry for behaving as though I am in control and I have all the answers. Lead me, lead us in your ways, O God. I would like to share with you a quotation which is among quite a number of verses that have come over my phone texting or into my voice email box. I believe it gives great hope while admonishing us not to allow the enemy to twist our minds and hearts during this ordeal. Satan says, I will cause anxiety, fear, and panic. I will shut down businesses, schools, places of worship, and sports events. I will cause economic turmoil. Jesus says, I will bring together neighbors, restore the family unit. I will bring dinner back to the kitchen table. I will help people slow down their lives and appreciate what really matters. I will teach my children to rely on me and not the world. I will teach my children to trust me and not their money and material resources. Amen. Dear friends, this being St. Patrick's Day, I will leave you with an Irish blessing. We actually sang this as the closing hymn this past weekend. It is rather poignant, and it is a reminder that God continually invites us to choose to be a voice of and a source of blessing for one another. May the road rise up to greet you. May the wind be always with you. May the sun shine warm upon you till we meet again. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.